The North Carolina Republican nominee for Governor Mark Robinson, as we've reported, has a long history of anti-Semitic, anti-LGBTQ, sexist comments. Now, just this past Saturday, Robinson told a crowd at a Republican fundraiser in Naples, Florida, that it's time to stand up and fight law enforcement. Take a listen. We once again can be the leaders of freedom in this nation. And it starts with us having a conversation in the mirror. Can I do it? Am I willing? When the chips are down, when the FBI is knocking on my door, will I cower? Will I comply? Or will I stand up and fight? Folks, it's time to stand up and fight. FBI knocking on your door? We reached out to Robinson's campaign uh, for him to explain the context of that remark. His communications director says, quote, he was clearly encouraging folks to mobilize at the ballot box to vote against Biden and the Democrats and their continued weaponization of the justice system against their political opponents, unquote. Now, Mr. Robinson is not the only controversial statewide candidate in North Carolina currently, which brings us to the Republican nominee to run North Carolina schools, who has tweeted about putting Democrats to death. Her name is Michelle Morrow. Here's one of her tweets. Take a look. It's a doctored photo of former President Barack Obama in an electric chair. Mora wrote, death to all traitors, hashtag Obamagate. Again, this is the Republican nominee to oversee public schools in North Carolina, you know, home of the research triangle. Joining us now, CNN's K-File senior reporter, Andrew Kaczynski. Andrew, that's not even all of it. There's a lot more. Well, that's right, Jake. Last week, Morrow, a conservative activist, won the nomination upsetting the incumbent North Carolina school superintendent. That's the state's uh, top school job while she was calling schools uh, indoctrination centers and socialism centers. She's also been linked to the QAnon uh, conspiracy theories, sharing a slogan associated with QAnon, where we go one, uh, we go all at least seven times on Twitter. She's also promoted the baseless adrenochrome conspiracy, which claims that celebrities harvest the blood of children. Uh, And she has also made extreme anti-Muslim comments. All of this while repeatedly talking about executing prominent Democrats. Take a look at this tweet right here from May of 2020, where she's responding to someone who says says they want to see Obama tossed in Gitmo. Marl wrote, quote, I prefer a pay-per-view of him in front of the firing squad. I do not want to waste another dime on supporting his life. We could make some money back from televising his death. In another tweet from December 2020, Morrow suggested executing Joe Biden, who was then president-elect, because he had asked Americans to wear a mask for 100 days at the height of the COVID-19 pandemic, saying, quote, we never... Uh, We need to follow the Constitution's advice, and then in all caps, kill all traitors. Uh, We also found numerous other tweets about executing Democrats in posts on social media. She tweeted the hashtag death to traitors at least 12 times. But Jake, those comments, uh, uh, her controversial comments really extended beyond that. She repeatedly shared that unfounded claim that Obama was a Muslim. She called Islam evil and even expressed belief in a very bizarre conspiracy theory that Chinese troops were going to invade the United States to help uh, Joe Biden be sworn in as president. There's a tweet uh, I want people to look at right here from her where she wrote, quote, tens of thousands of Chinese soldiers are already in Canada and probably Mexico uh, waiting for orders to invade. Now, if Mara wins and becomes the superintendent of North Carolina schools, she's going to have oversight of an $11 billion budget and, of course, education for the state's 1.3 million K-12 through students. My mom was, uh, my mom went to a public school in North Carolina. This is, I mean, this is highly disturbing stuff. What, what does Morrow say about these deranged tweets? What does she have to say about it now? So we reached out uh, to her campaign. Uh, We reached out to her personally, too, and we didn't hear back from either of them. We also reached out to the North Carolina Republican Party, uh, and we didn't hear back. So it's going to be really interesting to see how all of this is going to play out in North Carolina in 2024. It's obviously 
such an important swing state. Mark Robinson, who's at the top of the ticket, as you mentioned, has that history of extremely controversial comments. And this was a state that Trump beat Biden by in 2020 with his smallest margin. So all of this at the top of the ticket, down ballot, it's going to be a big factor in 2024. K-Files, Andrew Kaczynski, thank you so much. Good to have you back.